Yo, Elliot, I have a question regarding saving a low sex marriage, the topic that you discussed a few weeks ago in one of your videos. Should I take my wife's postpartum depression and insecurities that she has about herself into account? A large percentage of me believes that the reason that we're not intimate as often anymore is because she doesn't respect me. And I feel like she doesn't respect me because I'm not as respectable as I could be. Although I work on it every day and I truly think she sees a difference day to day, there's still not a whole lot of sex without me having to prod for it. I don't want a pity fuck. I want her to crave me. I'm sure a lot of questions will be answered uh, when I read the book you suggested, but I also generally feel like a good bit of it comes from her lack of confidence in her own appearance. Uh, we have a two-year-old daughter and she hasn't bounced back to where she wants to be physically, so she doesn't feel attractive. I've read that postpartum can actually really lower a woman's sex drive. So I guess my question would be, how do I work around her feeling more confident in herself in terms of attraction, as well as her libido being low after having a baby? So that's a really good question, right? Like, so after baby, a woman changes, right? And for sure they change. Um, some for the good, some for maybe not as good, right? And so this whole idea of postpartum depression, I have some, I have some opinions about it, right? Doesn't mean that I'm right, but the way I see it, I think what happens with a lot of women after they have a baby, uh, a couple of things happens. Number one is the shock of instantly becoming something that you once were or not kind of weighs very heavily on a person's ego. If they're heavily invested in who they are, meaning the way they look, right? Or the job they have, or the way they feel, and all that gets turned upside down in a matter of months and a baby comes and you're being asked to step into a brand new role that maybe you weren't mentally prepared for, there's going to be a resistance, right? So that's the mental aspect of it, right? Why do women have postpartum depression? It's because they weren't prepared for the fact that they're becoming a mother, right? In a world that denigrates family, in a world that hates mothers and fathers and tells women that, oh, you're living below your potential by being a mother and having a baby instead of climbing the corporate ladder and being, you know, being successful in the world. So I've seen this happen with certain women or, or wives of friends that I have, where now that the baby came, they're in, a, they're com they're conflicted. They're like, well, I was out there trying to save the world, but I got my baby now. And then there's this guilt of like, well, I really, I love my baby, but I don't want to be with my baby. I don't want to raise my baby. I want to go back to work. And I want to climb the corporate ladder again because that's what I've been trying to do since I was in the fifth grade. And my teacher told me that I had to do it for women's rights. And now I got a baby. Which one? So there's this conflict, especially for women that work. And you said that your wife works and she makes more money than you. So now she's conflicted between, am I a provider? Am I a worker? Am I out there building my career? Or should I be at home with my baby doing something that feels right, but my ego tells me otherwise, because like I said before, since I was a kid, the world's been telling me that that's beneath my potential. I need to go do something else. My opinion is that the minute a woman becomes a mother, that's her primary vocation. In fact, I believe that when a man becomes a father, that's his primary vocation. That means that everything that he does, quote unquote, outside in the world is for what? For your family. Parenthood is the primary vocation. And if you're a parent and you think otherwise, you're going to have conflict. And I think that's a part of the reason why women start having these depressions. Uh, you also bring up that she is now lacking confidence because of her own appearance. And I think this is something that the pop culture helps perpetuate. And I think we as men could, could be a bit more vocal about because I think most men think the way I think. But when a woman her body changes. If you love a woman, her body changes, right? Because she has a baby. So maybe she's a little bit more soft around the belly or she's carrying a little bit more fat, not becoming obese. That's a totally different story. But her body starts to change a little bit, right? Like my wife, all of a sudden, like after my, her, my last child, she started getting like this vein down her leg. She got like a varicose vein in her leg, right? And so it left, it left like a, a, something that wasn't there before, right? To me, she's just as attractive. To me, she's incredibly beautiful. In fact, the fact that she used her body to give birth to our children 
makes her body that much more attractive to me. It's like, wow, your body has been through all that. You've used this body the best way possible. I'm in awe of your ability to do that. My wife is just extremely attractive to me. Even if she's not attracted, she don't think she's attractive, right? Because women will be hard on themselves. She might not think she's attractive, but that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't make a difference. And I tell her that too. She tries when my wife does the same thing sometimes. She's like, I don't feel pretty. I was like, and I'm basically like, uh, I'll still hit it. <laughs> right. I was like, this that has, I don't care what you think about the way you look. I can't keep my hands off you. And so she feels that's see, women think they're not attractive, but if you can't keep your hands off her, you always sniffing her and licking her and kissing her and cuddling her and letting her know that damn, you're turning me on. She can't help but not feel attractive. She can't help but to feel attractive as a result because you're attracted to her. You can't say I'm unattractive if something's attracted to you, right? That's like a magnet, right? You can't say, oh, this is not a magnet, but yet shit is still coming to it, right? Metal is still attracted to it. You get, oh, this is a, this magnet don't feel attractive. Doesn't matter what the magnet thinks or its opinion of itself, it's attracting stuff, right? And if she's still attracting you, she's still attractive. And that's really all that matters. My wife will argue with me on this one too. She says, no, I need to feel pretty for me. I need to feel attractive for me. I say, no, you don't. (laughs) No, you don't. As long as I think you look good, we're fine. You're fine. What else do you need, right? Would you need to pacify the person in the mirror? I don't understand, right? What difference does it make? Anyway, that's just my opinion. I'm a little weird, right? So going back to, you know, your question, you're asking a lot of stuff here, right? And one of the things is respect, right? Women want a man they can look up to, regardless of what they say. Women want a man they can look up to. They never want to look down on their man. I have a tall daughter. One of my daughters, she's, she's tall. And I tease her sometimes. I'm like, don't, don't get with a man that you look down on. And she laughs because she knows I'm talking about her tall. I was like, don't be with a man that you look down on, right? Because it's just in the nature. She's looking down. I'm looking down on you. That's why women won't date men that are shorter than them for the most part, because they're looking down on them. And women don't want to look down on on a man. And it it happens to do with status and money and things of that nature too. She wants to look up. She wants to look up and say, that's my man. That's my man. He's high status, high income, right? Taller, right? More powerful presence. That's what they're, that's what they want to open up and blossom for, not somebody down. So you talk about your wife making more money than you also, as a provider, she's looking down on you, right? You say she, you, she, she lacks respect for you, but it's hard because she doesn't look up to you, right? She's looking down on you, whether she says it literally or not, right? So you're talking about her feeling attractive and then you're talking about you being respectful, right? Or respectable, right? And, um, you know, that's where, that's pretty much where I'm at with those two things, right? Like her, the whole idea of her feeling attractive will come from you. You make her feel attractive by being attracted to her. And if she's turned it, and I know it sounds like, you know, she's turning you down. She says she's tired. I haven't showered. You know what my wife said? What I say to my wife or when she says, like, you know, I feel gross. I just start rubbing her all over and say, you feel great to me. Right? I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe, it's, maybe we're just weird. But if she's tired, I say, well, let me wake you up. Right? Let's wake up. Like, like joke about it. Right? Like if she's, if she's resisting you, you got to be lighthearted about it. You got to like make jokes about it. Right? You got to be part of your confidence, your personal confidence comes from not taking her rejections too seriously and kind of making light of it, right? You got to be a little witty, right? That way she giggles. Women like the way men feel when, you know, make them feel when they're being witty, right? Be witty, tell a joke, right? Make fun, make light of it, and she'll lighten up, right? So just like your question, I'm talking in circles, right? He says, uh, she hits me with the, I'm tired. I haven't showered, which I feel is BS. Cause you're right. It is BS, right? Because if she looked at me the way she would look at a Brad Pitt to quote you, I don't think, I don't feel like she could resist. I feel like I'm a very attractive guy, but that's really all I have going for me. And he says, you know, I recently got a job or making decent money, so on, so on, so on and so forth. 
There are a few other things uh, that I forgot to mention with regard to a woman after she has a baby uh, that, that, that causes this so-called depression. Number one is women who have C-sections or were uh, using met, like pain medication, right? Like, like a, a, a um, what do they call it? Epidural during pregnancy have a higher incidence of postpartum depression. Did you know that? Women that didn't give birth naturally, women who give birth naturally have a lower instance of postpartum depression because the physiology of the body will either, so here's what, one of the things that happens when there's a C-section or a woman uses uh, pain medication to have a baby. The body, it's a weird thing because the body's weird. The body's like smart, but it's stupid in a way. And so the body recognizes that there's no more baby in me, but the body is also like, but we never gave birth, right? Because the birthing process is a, it, it, it sends signals to the physiology of a woman. The birthing process, the opening up of the vagina and the head of the baby comes out, facilitates biological processes for the baby and the mother. That's why we can't bypass it, right? In life, when we bypass challenges because, oh, it's too hard, well, then we, we suffer. So I don't know if this is the case for your wife, but women who give natural birth have less incidence of postpartum depression. Look that up. And another one is breastfeeding. Women who don't breastfeed their baby have a higher incidence of depression. That's probably where I should have gone with this whole video, but I kind of lost track. Women who don't breastfeed their baby, the baby, the body then says something like this. It goes, well, we gave birth, the baby came out, but we're not feeding the baby. What happened? So the body thinks that you lost the baby. So when a baby comes, when the baby's taken out without going through the, the birthing process, the body freaks out and the hormones get screwed up because it's like, what happened to the baby? There was a baby in here, but there's no baby here. And we never went through the whole process of giving birth. So your body doesn't know that you gave birth. Your body doesn't know, the body doesn't know that the baby came out. And so there's conflict. And then the other one is the baby comes out, but the wom woman doesn't breastfeed. If a, if a baby comes out of a woman, and the body doesn't get a chance to feed the baby, the body's like, oh shit, I guess the baby died. And then there's a hormonal cascade. So like I said, the, the body's smart, but the body's dumb in a way. And it doesn't know. So a lot of these women get depressed as a result, right? So these are things that I would invite anybody who's listening to this to consider in terms of helping your wife recover from, uh, from pregnancy. Encourage her to have natural vaginal birth and to breastfeed the kids. And there's a lower, much lower incidence of depression as a result. But again, you know, these are things that are kind of counterculture today in our backwards world. So I hope those tips help you, dude. Um, honestly, you know, you started your, 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 your question with, maybe I should just read the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, read the book, read the book. Um, saving a low sex marriage and follow the process and do what he tells tells you and all the things that I mentioned as problems, you know, will resolve themselves. I really and truly believe that. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.